Okay, thank you for coming, everybody. Uh, so we are going to talk about um, a robo robo-based task runner that we we build as part of our uh, effort at the European Commission. So first of all, uh, let me thank the sponsors: uh, Diamond sponsors, Platinum sponsors, and the Gold sponsors. So big thanks to them. All right, so what is the Open Europe Initiative? So this is uh, um, something we started this year in the European Commission as part of our effort of contributing back to, to open source. Uh, so the European Commission has been running already sites on, on Drupal for like the last uh, two or three years. Uh, the current Commission site runs on a version 7 of Drupal uh, on a distribution called the multi-site. Um, it is a monolithic distribution, so it's one code base with everything packaged together. And um, yeah, this created many problems for maintainability, um, you name it. So um, with a new version of, uh, of Drupal 8, uh, we are now moving from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, and uh, we wanted to shift a bit this, uh, this approach of having the monolithic approach, and we uh, went towards uh, decoupling everything, breaking down the monolith into smaller components. Uh, this would allow us to um, foster, for example, collaboration, um, to have more maintainable components, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's just much more convenient. So we started then the Open Europe Initiative, which is an initiative that is um, uh, sponsored by the European Commission. Um, it's basically all the software that we build inside the European Commission uh, regarding web. We are gonna uh, release it open source uh, under the EUPL, which is the European Union Public License, which is the, the, the derivative of the GPL. Um, so our goal is really to, the ultimate goal for us, for our team, is of course to provide the European institutions uh, with the software that, that it needs to run um, their site and their web presence. But in the process, we also want to give back to the community as much as possible. And by community, we don't mean only the Drupal community, but we want to add this broader developer community. So um, we are, I'm going to focus mostly about um, tools uh, that are like Drupal related, but for example, the task runner that we are gonna present today, it is not related to Drupal only, it's a PHP uh, project that you can use in any PHP uh, applications, basically. So that's, um, that's basically it. So the Open Europa um, initiative is um, open source at its core, which means that every documentation, every decision we make, every governance uh, structure, everything, we actually use GitHub to uh, public GitHub repository to, to track and, and, and publish. Uh, and this means that uh, we treat our documentation, our decisions, everything as, uh, as we treat software. So we open pull request and then we contribute back. So if you're interested in this project, uh, you just go on github.com slash open Europa, open Europa, and that's the kind of project page where you can, from this page, you can basically have a list of the components that you can re reuse. Um, so the components are basically a small, um, like very defined pieces of software. For example, you have the task runner, which I'm going to use today, or uh, I don't know, like a code review component that allows you to, to perform code reviews using CodeSniffer, for example, or uh, composer plugins for different use cases, or Drupal modules, Drupal themes implementing the commission identity, all that. So why we went from a component-based approach as opposed to a monolithic one? Well, for obvious reasons. So every component has its own repository. It enjoys an independent release cycle. Uh, it is tested separately, so we test each of them separately, so we don't have any more the huge monolith that we have to test all together. Uh, we have continuous integration pipelines per project. Uh, each of them is semantically versioned. This is very important. And uh, also it's their dependencies are semantically versioned, so it's, of course, all based uh, on Composer. The component that are, that are PHP related, of course, because uh, the Open Europe initiative is not only about PHP. We, we have different technologies. The PHP one, of course, we use Composer to manage the dependencies. So at the moment, we have released the following um, Drupal-related uh, components. Those components are actually targeting the European institutions. Um, so basically, there is, there is a Open Europa theme, which is a Drupal 8 theme based on the Europa component library, which is like the European Commission look and feel, basically, style guide. Uh, then we have several other projects, Paragraph, Multilingual, uh, Authentication, et cetera. Uh, what is interesting, more interesting for you is actually the PHP components. So these are the components that are not related to Drupal at all and they're not related to our internal use case at all. So these are really something that you can pick up and use in any of your projects. 
we have done, we have released some of them, as I was saying before, um, they call the review component. It's a component that helps you to automate um, uh, code review, basically. So using PHP Cosniffer and other uh, tasks is based on Grand PHP, which is a, a project to automate code reviews. Uh, Composer Artifacts is quite interesting one. It's a Composer plugin that allows you to download an, an artifact as a dependencies and not um, a Git repository, basically. So imagine if you have like a, the theme, it's built uh, as into an artifact that contains all the templates and all the um, assets, compiled JavaScript, compiled CSS that can be used as composer dependencies using this, this plugin, basically. We use this in our theme because our theme is built as an artifacts. Then we have uh, our custom twig loader for Europa component library, a custom authentication library with written in PHP that's also completely unrelated to anything within the commission. We use it, but it's, you can use it in all your projects. And then finally, our, uh, our friend, the task runner. So the task runner is, it's uh, basically, um, since we have several components, the number of components is growing, both in Drupal and non-Drupal. Uh, we have a challenge. We had a challenge of streamlining the um, de development process of all our developers. So imagine you have like a team of 12 developers in the core team of the Open Europe Initiative. Plus we have uh, several other teams in the commission using our, our, our tools. So imagine if each one of them had to set up the, its own environment and you know, build the site to test the module or uh, all that. So we wanted the task runner, so something like Thing, for example, but a little bit more um, modern in a way, because we used to use Thing on the Drupal 7 version. So our, uh, like the task runner we wished we had uh, would be based on PHP, because we are comfortable working PHP, of course. It would be easily configurable uh, by YAML files. It would be, we would like to create new commands easily, so your task and uh, it would be easy to do that. Uh, we would like also to have uh, the ability to package commands together for reusability. So if, for example, we have uh, a use case of uh, building a release package that can be applied to different projects, we want that to be maybe another project, another component that people can just download and use in their projects. So those commands would then, you know, would be nice to, if they would be um, bundled together for reusability. And then uh, something to, like, would be nice also to have an extendable task runner with command auto discovery, a bit, a bit like Trash does and, or, or Drupal console. So um, the, our natural choice was Robo, of course. It's a modern uh, task runner written in PHP, which answers most of the points that I just listed. So it's quite nice. It's a really natural choice for us. It is based on Symfony components on which Drupal 8 is based too. So that's also what is nice. So we have three shared dependencies. So the, the more dependencies we share, the, least, the, 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 the smaller is the footprint. Uh, it's based on uh, Symfony console. So the robot commands are uh, Symfony console commands, the same way Drush 9 works. It uses uh, Symfony file system, even dispatcher also used by Drupal 8, uh, Finder, etc. And it's very well architected. I mean, the, the maintainers and developers of Robo did a very good job in, uh, in dividing breaking down the project into smaller components and open sourcing those smaller components for reusage. For example, we have um, consolidation config, just dealing with, with YAML configuration, so that's just a project we can use. Uh, Drush uses that as well, actually. So the annotated command, also Drush uses that as well. It's just a way to annotate command and add uh, options and arguments as annotations. Uh, output formatters uh, is an helper to uh, format output for the console. So its main features are, uh, it allows command to be written in PHP. Uh, how it works by default, you need to, write, you need to have a robofile.php in your root directory, in your project, and then each uh, method, public method of that uh, class, where well, there is a class in that file, but every public method is uh, it's a command, basically, it's exposed directly as a command. You can annotate those public methods, adding options and arguments. Uh, it provides a very easy way to work with things like file system, git, Composer, NPM, Docker, SSH, LC, testing frameworks, etc. So, uh, what Robo does is basically it it um, it packages together what Robo calls tasks, and then each command you write, you can work with this and combine these tasks together. And this task can work with many different tools or, or projects like those tools there. Um, it is configurable via YAML, which is what is something that we wanted because we 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 feel comfortable with YAML. Um, it supports things like uh, progress indication, task stacking, stop on failure, all these kind of nice things. 
Uh, it can be used as a framework, so that's also really nice. So uh, you don't, it's not a black box robot, it's really like a symphony application, a symphony console application, basically, that's what it is. So you can actually make an another runner from that runner, that's what we did actually, the task runner. Um, yeah, it can be a custom task runner. And it has been developed actually by the Trash Maintainer, that's why we, have, we are very much related to that project. So uh, Greg Anderson is the main um, maintainer of the project, the Trash Maintainer depends on it actually. So it's really natural choice for us to use this one, of course, because we re 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 find again all our tools, all our you know, the maintainers that we are used to work with, etc. So uh, how does that work? Uh, so when you install Robo, you just um, um, require Robo in your in your uh, list of dependencies, and then you have the binary there in under vendor. So if you type vendor bin in it, Robo in it, it will create the the Robo file I told you earlier. And uh, that robo file looks like that, so it just uh, extends the robot tasks. And then there you can just add, uh, I put this one very quick. Here you can just add basically the, the, the public methods. And uh, those public methods will become commands in your command line. It's very, very simple. So um, this is like a, a very simple hello world command. So what you do, you add a function called hello. And then you say this, say hello world. Word is a parameter. It's basically an argument you can pass. So robo hello world will, will just print hello world. That's it, simple as that. This is a very simple example, of course. Example, of course. Can get really, uh, not complex, but really featured, let's say. Uh, so you can add there really anything, optional parameters uh, and whatnot, flags, uh, uh, requirement, uh, required parameters, and anything. So um, what robo does is really, it allows you to write commands and it's really a bridge between the commands that, you, that allows you to write easily and the tasks that it exposes, right? So these are the tasks that are coming uh, out of the box when you use robo. So you have like uh, documentation generation, um, you can work with archives or you can zip or unzip files. You can work with assets, so you can minify an image, for example, you can compile SAS in PHP, it sounds crazy, but it's there. Uh, you can execute shell scripts, easy, as easy as that, so you can execute any shell script you want. You can execute Composer inside the robot, so if you want to, I don't know, check your dependencies for security vulnerability, for example, you can do that as well. You can automate these kind of tasks. Uh, it, it, you can run a PHP server, generate a changelog, work with Docker, very, very um, interesting. If you want to access a service as a, um, as a Docker image, you can just bundle this in, into your command and automate that. You can work with files, you can merge text files, uh, replace tokens into files, concaten concatenate files, etc. Uh, then it, it, also, it is also a bridge between the file system uh, compo symphony components and your commands. So you can easily copy file, directory, remove, rename, uh, touch, change, permissions, so all of that very easily in your commands as well. That's how. Um, normally your, your command kind of look like. So this is actually a command that publish your site in the, under GitHub pages. So if you want to automate that, that's a way to do it in robot, just pasted it from the, the robot documentation. So you can have your current branch from there and then uh, you have your collection builder, which is a collection of tasks. The collection lets you uh, access the task git stack, so the stack of tasks related to git. You can check out the site here you can merge master into site branch, uh, and then you can then copy the changelog under docs changelog.md. Uh, you can replace something, remove something else, mm, and then deploy basically on GitHub. So this is the way you work, basically. You use the tasks from Robo inside, inside your commands. So it's really, really flexible. Of course, you can also access configuration there and play with that as well. Now, what was missing in Robo for us? So um, our main use case is really reusability. So we want, since we have like this uh, component-based approach, so every project uh, lives in its own repository, so it's really imperative for us that we can reuse things and we can easily package things and distribute to other developers in our teams. And this was not that easy to do in Robo, right? Because Robo supports natively only one file, robo, robofile.php, in your root directory and there where you put your commands. So how do you share that with your, with, your, with, your, with your team? It's a bit cumbersome, you can do it, but you know, it's not really the best. There is a lot of copy paste involved maybe. Not ideal. So um, yeah, we wanted to have a plugin system. So uh, how to discover commands, the same way it happens with, uh, with Rush, for example, or with, uh, 
with the Drupal uh, console, something like that. And then uh, also we wanted to have a more um, advanced use case for configuration because we work with uh, continuous integration pipelines so we want to override only certain parameters in our builds. Um, if you are, for example, on a continuous integration environment rather than on a production or staging on your local development. So the configuration that Robo um, offered was simple. Well, better enough, but quite simple. So we wanted more from that as well. So then we created our open Robo task parameter and uh, we did it by leveraging Robo as a framework. So this is a completely uh, legit use case of using Robo. They actually um, like sponsor it. They say, okay, if you want, build your own console application using Robo as a framework. So this means that you will have to uh, specify your own executable. In our case, is vendor bin run instead of vendor bin robo. Yeah? And there you just build the new console application, you build your container, and then you can customize basically everything. And that's the, well, how you can really expand over the work that they did in robo. They do the same thing in Dash 9, actually. So they also, Dash 9 is also like robot as a framework kind of thing. Um, so, our task runner makes it easy to organize commands as separate PHP 5 classes. So we have, we have, we have, we have created um, a plugin system which auto load classes when they match a specific namespace. So that you, this means that you can uh, package commands together and distribute them as separate project. So it's a, the usability I was telling you earlier. Um, it allows also to define commands by YAML. This is something that was not there in Robo at all. So you can, in, your, in our configuration files, you can easily write Expo create new commands by just writing, writing YAML. Very, very simple. So it's really, really uh, convenient and uh, it really lowered the barrier for uh, you know, uh, using the tool. Actually, we, we rarely use uh, commands as classes anymore. We only use them as YAML, so it's really, really easy to do. We have commands auto discovery, as I said, and uh, it allows complex configuration use cases such as this. Basically, what we do, we, we look for a runner.yaml.dist as first in the directory where, robo, uh, where, uh, where uh, our task runner runs, so there is no robo file anymore. Your, your, your root directory is completely clean, no robo file, you don't put your commands there. We find it like more convenient this way. Um, so there is just a runner.yaml.dist which contains the configuration for the task runner commands and extra commands as well. There is the same, the, um, we are using the, um, the pattern of dist and non-dist. You, if you use bhat, you have the same kind of thing. Uh, with bhat configuration, if you use, I don't know, PHP unit has the same kind of pattern, you know, xml.dist, xml. So what you do, you commit yaml.dist for distributing uh, towards your colleagues, uh, but then you keep, you get ignore runner.yaml and there you keep your local customization. So this allows a very easy, um, configuration, uh, like uh, working with configuration. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what we, we built in. This is an example of configuration. You will see in a while uh, different commands because the task runner also packaged together commands that are actually useful for Drupal development, of course, because at the end that's what we do also in the commission. And um, the commands are namespaced. You can namespace commands in, in Robo, so you can also in the task runner. So you can have like Drupal column something or, you know, release column something, etc. And the namespace is reflected in the structure of the YAML file, so it's really well organized. So this is like um, how, if you want to build a Drupal site with a task runner, you just have to specify those things, and that's it. The rest will be taken care of. So where you find the Drupal root, so build, for example, web, the base URL that's useful for um, Drush configuration, to generate Drush configuration, for example, for the URI parameter or for BHAT things, we'll see in a, sec in a while. The database the configuration, then there is something very useful called the post install. So this, those commands are run at the post install. So when the site is installed, it runs those commands. There you can pass other things, we'll see in a second. In a second. And then something very interesting, the settings part. That basically converts whatever you pass into this uh, YAML thing here, it will append it in the setting.php turning it into, into an array, of course, a PHP array. So that's, that's very, very useful because in the, this way you can, for example, ignore some directory, you can configure your uh, configsing directory, you can add whatever you want to your settings of PHP. So you don't need to commit anymore any settings default, whatever. Something that I actually omitted is that we don't commit our build directory. So our, like, we, we run everything in Composer, so when we build a new site, 
the web directory is never committed. It's created from scratch all the time, every time, right? So that's, that's what is different. And this helps in this case because you never commit any settings. You commit the settings to the task runner, and then it's the task runner that generates the right settings PHP file, okay? So that's how it works. So it's really clean. The, our repositories are, are really minimal. We don't have any build, any web committed there. It's just the simple files, this one and the six, basically. Because Composer will build the site, of course, uh, I assume that. So these are the built-in commands that the task runner offers you when you use it. Um, it's, uh, well, of course we work with Drupal, so we, we thought it was, would be nice to have a site install command so you can ins 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 install the site uh, by just running that. And that will take all the parameters from this file and produce the right bash command that will install your site according to these parameters, of course. Huh? You will see it in the demo at the end. We also have a pre and post install hoops that you can, uh, that are run before and after the installation. And if you want to run only the pre or only the post install hook, you also have two commands to do that. So you do like run Drupal site pre-install, it runs only the, this portion of the pre-install. If you want to run the post install, just do dra uh, Drupal site post install and it will just run these two commands here, the post install. Uh, then something nice is the setting setup and rush setup, those two are actually producing the settings of PHP. Actually what we do is that we write in the default those settings of PHP because we let the installation generate the, the settings of PHP then for us, right? So those things will basically convert this part into, an, into a PHP array and append it under the default of setting the PHP of Drupal so that when we install the site, right, the site, the settings of PHP is generated according with those values. So we are clean, basically, okay? And the same is for Drush setup. Drush setup generates uh, configuration files for Drush 8 and 9 based on the task runner configuration. So, for example, you know, like in Drush 9, you have to pass dash dash URI and then URI if you want to, I don't know, generate uh, the login, login link, right? Very common use case. So Drush ULI, Drush 9, you also have to pass the, uh, dash dash URI and then that's no need anymore. Because that, this thing, base URL, will, will, be, will be used to generate the, the Drush configuration that will be bundled by our task runner inside the site. So you, need to, you don't need to worry about anything else. So there is only one point of configuration for all your application and all parts of your application is this file, the task runner file, nothing else, right? We'll see how, um, how uh, effective this can become. So, um, okay, so we said also that we want to um, expose commands as PHP classes. So that's how you do it. Basically, we don't have any more uh, um, robofile.php in, in our root, we don't have that. What we have instead is the possibility of having command classes. So you can create as many classes as you want as long as you uh, have this middle, um, this middle um, namespace here, task runner slash commands. Whatever class in your uh, PSR4 namespace has this as a middle um, namespace will be loaded as a command, will be exposed as a command, right? This means that since we use the class loader from Composer to do that, it means that we can package those commands into another project. So we can actually distribute commands because you, if you want, for example, I don't know, um, hello world command as, as a project that you want to share with all your team, what you do, you do that, you package it into your Composer, into your project, you, you release this project on packages. That project will have a, will have a Composer.json with this autoload here, right? When your project requires that, that class is loaded in your class, so the task runner will find it and will expose the commands that are there inside, okay? So this is the plugin system we have put in place that was missing in, 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 in Robo originally. Okay, so now we can really package command distributed. This will allow a lot of flexibility. Now, <coughs> actually, uh, we have ported this inside Robo, so now you don't need to use the task runner at all. If you want to, you just do this because we have, Mm, backported that, well, backported. We have ported it in Robo, so we talked with, uh, with Greg, and uh, we just uh, merged this. So now, actually, Robo uses our, uh, well, what we contributed to, to, so our plugin system. How many people use the Robo? Uh, how many of you knew about this thing? Okay, yeah. So it's, yeah, it was from 1.2.2. Uh, it was there, and yeah, and now it's 1.3, so it's really, really there since a while. How does it work? 
So you can register commands. It's really pretty much the same slide I showed you, and this is the official robot documentation. So uh, Greg chose this uh, namespace. So everything that is robot plugin commands will get automatically autoloaded. So now you can, and this works also for your own uh, project. So you don't need anymore the robofile.php, basically. If you want a cleaner root for whatever reason, you can put all your commands under SRC and then the name of uh, the class, and then just use this uh, namespace here, robo plugin commands, and then it's done. So we plan to add more plugins to robo, but okay, that's for later. For the moment, commands are like, they work like that. So something really interesting that we have added to, to the task runner is the possibility of adding commands via YAML. So uh, f at, at up until now, the only way of, of adding commands was to write the commands in PHP inside uh, your command classes using this very verbose task chain of things, okay? I mean, it's okay, of course, but we've offered this way of doing that. It's exactly the same thing, but is in, in, uh, in, uh, in YAML. So you, under your uh, runner, uh, task runner configuration file, so in runner.yaml.dist, what you do, uh, you just list the commands you want. So for example, you want a command called Drupal site setup. So what you do, you just add that one, and then you just list the task that you want to run. So what we have done is that we have covered for now just a limited set of tasks. Uh, so for example, if you want to ch do, run a, ch uh, a ch mode on that file uh, with those permissions, right? You can do that there. What you can notice here is that the, the, the token replacement works as well. That's very interesting because then means that you can, um, the configuration is injected in those things as well. So it's really easy to, to actually have one part only to change the configuration, then it will be reflected everywhere. So if you use, for example, Docker, we use Docker to, to work with our stuff. The paths in Docker are different than the paths in the host, of course, so it's very easy to just fix that. You just have to change one parameter up there, and then all your commands are, are fine. Same here, down, I don't know if you can read it, but you can execute any kind of commands. If it's not an array, it's considered a shell command, so you can execute actually anything. If it's an array, then it will look for task, task will then proxy to the right object inside the robot um, framework, and then those are like the, yeah, the, the parameters, basically. It's really trivial, actually. It's just a bridge, so nothing else. Nothing more than that. What is also very interesting is the process command. So this is, um, this basically generates, uh, process a text file, uh, changing the um, tokens inside these text files using configuration from the runner. What is the use case for this? For example, you have a biat yaml.dist, right? And inside that biat you want to change the, the Drupal base URL, right? So localhost uh, column 88 is slash bid or I don't know, my site dot development slash whatever. You just have to change it in one place in, this, in the runner configuration under base uh, URL under Drupal, remember that part there? And then that file will replace it inside the, the dist basically. And this works with any text file, so you can do pretty much anything. It's very flexible. In one of our projects, we also generate service file, like the Drupal 8 service file with that. So we generate a custom service file and just replacing the tags. It's very, very simple, but very convenient. So those are what is supported for the moment. If you check the code, it, there is a very Spartan <laughs> case switch. So for the moment, it's totally okay. What we plan to do is to make an actual plugin system for this so that all commands can expose their YAML version, let's say, so that, but for the moment it's just like a, really a switch, very simple. So that's what we, we provide now. We have the task identifier. So we have um, all the, um, we support all the Symfony console components tasks. So you can do pretty much anything with file system. So uh, make directory, uh, touch, copy, you know, all that. Then we also have a mirror. So mirror directories to another. This is useful if you are building like artifacts. They want to mirror things, so they mirror this directly to that. Again, you can always change the, um, um, the tags, the, the tokens there, so it's very flexible. You process files, so process any text file by replacing configuration tokens inside and generating a new one, or the same one, actually. You can also override the file if you want. And then run, run is very nice because it's, it just runs a task runner command, so it can run itself. So actually, you can go recursive with that, so yeah. Uh, in some of the um, thing, I think okay, I have it here. Yeah, there, so run, you see this one? Run, task run, command, setup, be add. This command is actually this command. So we, we, we declare a command and we can use it inside the declaration of another command very easily. 
So you can actually combine everything. So thanks to this extension here that we did, we never, until now, we never wrote one, one set command in PHP anymore. So that's, we find it very convenient because we really didn't like this chain of things. I mean, but anyway, so that's, uh, that's what um, we can do now with that. Now, okay, so demo time. Now, um, let's see, we have 15 minutes, well, a bit more. So, uh, sorry for I'm back, but I have no choice. So, open Europa. Yeah, so actually, about the Open Europa project, if you go here and then components, here you get the list of components. Those are the PHP components that we have. So, that's Kramner is right here. You can see it. Those are the Drupal components. Yeah. Now, for the Drupal component, we're going to work with our theme. So, this is something really specific for the commissioner, but it's really the most comprehensive usage of the task runner we did it in this project. Here we really do anything with that. It's really, really crazy. So um, what we have here, I can switch now to my PHP Storm, I think. Yeah, here. So uh, oops. here I have like a, a clone of, of that repository that you just saw. It's just, just a simple clone. You can see there is no build directory, nothing. It's just, this is actually a theme. So it's not a site, right? It's a theme. So it's a new commission theme for Drupal 8, which uses the Europa component library, which is like a design system built in Node, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what is interesting here is that every component we develop, we, de we, we develop it as a completely isolated component. So we don't require the, any developer to ever run in Drupal site to start working on, a, on one of the components, right? Because this would create an enormous amount of problems because one person will have a different version of the Drupal core and the other one will have a dirty database and all this mess. So we have to avoid that because it really is unbearable. So what we do is that we actually, we, we list the Drupal core itself as a development requirement of the theme because that's what it is if you think about. Drupal core is a development uh, dependency of the theme. To develop the theme, you need Drupal. You cannot develop the theme without Drupal, right? So we list all our dependencies, the development dependencies here. Here you can see the task runner right there. I don't know if you can read it, but yeah. Um, and then the Webflow Drupal core required dev, there inside there is Drupal core. So now we have 8.6. So I'm gonna now run Composer install here. All right, so it's gonna take uh, a minute. In the meanwhile, oh, thank you. Don't, yeah, ah, better. All right, so yeah, so then, oh, very good. So then, look, that's, uh, that's how we work basically. So Drupal core is a requirement of the theme. Without Drupal core, the theme doesn't work. So it's listed as a requirement there. Then you also have, the theme also depends from UI pattern, style guide, whatever. Our ECI twig loader, it's also a dependency of the theme. We require 7.1. Then for the development requirements, we just, we require the Drupal extension, BIAT extension, because we test, right? Brush, of course, and then our components. So the code review components for code review, our two other modules for developing the theme, the task runner, and then these are the development things from, from Webflow. Um, so this will build the full Drupal site inside this project here. In a while, you will see here a build directory. Why? Because we use uh, the composer installers, right? And here down, we have the installer path. So basically this will build the Drupal site inside the directory. Now, how can we develop the theme inside the site that is inside the theme? That's the problem, right? So we need to sim link it inside the site. So who does that? The task runner, right? So notice this thing here. Post install command and post update command, there is something that you should be familiar by now. Drupal site setup. So after the composer finishes installation, so builds the site, then we directly run as a post install command of composer, our runner, so vendor bin run Drupal site setup. This will execute what is, in, what is listed here. Uh, here. Yeah. There, Drupal site setup. So let's see what this does. It does a symlink, there is a symlink, you see? So here we see link the root 
of the project, so the theme, inside the theme. And where is the theme? Well, the theme is wherever is the Drupal root, I don't care, right? So here, and the Drupal root is this one, okay? Drupal.root, so Drupal.root. So wherever is the Drupal root, dash themes, dash custom, dash three theme. So simulating that. Then, simulating this little thing, okay, that's for development. Then run brush setup, setting setups, which will produce both settings from the brush and, and the site inside the, the, correct, um, the correct location in the build directory, which by now we should see, yes. Um, then run, set up PHP unit and set up BHAT. What these two do? Here we have the, 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 um, the commands, see there? So set up PHP unit will process the PHP unit.xml.dist and we create a PHP unit.xml which is ignored, of course, git ignored. And then the setup bhat will process bhat.yaml.dist and we create a, a yaml, bhat yaml. And we can find them here now. There, there they are. So this is the dist. You can see here. You see the tags there? So database base URL, Drupal roots here. This is the um, MySQL string. And this is the results. It is. With the web. Why this one? Because we're running inside Docker container. So that's why there is web, because it's inside the container. So that's the name of the service inside the container. That's why. But you can put whatever you want, of course. Yeah. And then the same thing happened here. This, the BIAT configuration, will have Drupal base URL here, which we produce, of course, web 8080 build. All right? Now let's have a look at. This all happened here as part of the post install, you see? Run Drupal site setup, and then these are the commands that we are running. Theme link, uh, we run all the configuration, write configuration, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, what's happening here, actually? As part of the settings, for example, when we, set, when we set up the settings file, we want to, to ignore what we want to ignore, since there is a sim link and there would be recursion otherwise, we want to ignore the Drupal root. Because otherwise it will recurse and it will be a mess, of course. Because the theme is sim linked inside itself, basically, inside the, 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 the site. So if we go here now, build, this is the, the build, this is the Drupal site that we call it the target site. So every component has its own site with different requirements, just specific to that component. And then if you go inside the theme here, you can see the sim link there, you see? This is sim link to the roots. Basically, then if you go inside Drush, this is generated by our task runner. So Drush now will use that. When you do like Drush ULI, you will get an actually working URL for logging in as, a, as admin, for example. The same happened to, to the site. Default, see there is no settings yet because we did not install it yet, right? So that's, that's the reason why. If you go here and you go really, really down, at the, at the bottom of it, up. there we go. This is the settings, file scan directories, and we, we remove the node modules, the boiler components, the vendor, and build. This is the Drupal root. So th this will allow us to basically have it sim linked inside itself. Now let's install it. So to install it, we are, this is, we are, here we are inside the container. Eh? So this is our, the root of our project. So what I do, vendor bin run. This is our task runner. Those are the commands that, that I have exposed as YAML. Remember, setup, BIAT setup thing. Those are the custom commands. We also have a generation of changelog, uh, creation of archive. I will, I will show you that one in a second. Um, so we, we just want to now install the site. So what we do is just Drupal site install. This will generate that drush command, replacing everything from the, the, the only si point of configuration, so the, the only runner of YAML, the replacement of that. Then we start with a post install hook. It will uh, enable that module because you need it. It will enable that other module because you need it for development only. It will uh, set the theme, I think now it will happen, set the theme as default because we want it as default. It will do all sorts of things, set seven as the admin theme, all this, all this stuff, there you go enable config devel. You can see it here, actually. Um, right here. You see, all these tasks are now being executed. 
We set the config, the theme there, and then we clear the cache. Yeah, we enable OE theme as a theme inside the site. We enable seven and everything. So if, as you see in here, I just run two commands to have everything set up for me. I didn't do anything, right? So composer install, and then site install with a task crawler. Bam. And that's the way that we can work very effectively on several components in parallel in 12 people in the commission, which otherwise would be a total mess. Okay, so it's really, really streamlined. Now, the site is available on here. There you go, that's the site. Now, this is a site that we all use to de develop the theme. You see, that's the point. We can test on that. We can run BHAT test on that thing. We can run the PHP unit test, kernel test, everything. It's all contained there. And the CI, of course, the continuous integration also uses the task runner. I mean, the CI is really trivial. If you check the drone CI file that we have here, it's really, um, it's that simple. I mean, right here. Yeah, so this is it. Site setup, site install, that's it, done. And then you can start the test. Test Gramp, PHP unit, be out. All right? Now, something else also is that we can create artifacts with our um, task runner. That's another command that we have. And it's right here, release, we call it. So the, the theme, it's also, it's also pulling NPM dependencies with uh, all the style guide. I did not do it here because it would take a bit of time, so they are there. Now, this is gonna create a release uh, artifacts, which will also append this release node inside the info file. And what you find there, you find our tags again. So this is exactly what Drupal.org does, but we do it for our, for our thing. So um, basically the tasks are remove the oetheme.js, remove the templates, copy this to that, copy that to that, and then append through the info this thing here. And of course replace the stuff while doing it. Okay. This works automatically on our continuous integration pipeline. Whenever we tag, there is an event in drone that runs this command and the artifacts is uploaded directly to our GitHub releases pages. And that artifacts is a completely usable theme, theme, Drupal theme basically. You don't need to do any node install, nothing. It's all packed together, ready to be released. Now I'm gonna run it for, for you to see. So uh, if we go here, vendor bin um, run, and I think it's called release, wait, release, yeah. So release create archive. See, this runs all these commands and then it will create this archive, theme 051, which is the tag we are currently on. Uh, so if we open now this directory and then we check the release, there it is. This is our artifacts. We open this stuff. It's all packaged together. Let's check our info. And we go down and there it is, our beautiful release note, the same way Drupal does. This, is by the this will be done in the drone, continuous integration and uploaded directly to our uh, release page in GitHub. So it will produce basically this thing here. Let's see how much time I have. Okay, it's good. Yeah, okay, so that's the site. The working site, you can pretty much do anything with it. It's working, you know, I mean, you can start, start, start working. This is actually a way of working that uh, also lower uh, the cost for contribution. If you want to contribute to one of our projects, you have everything that you need to set up correctly and start patching it and working on it and then creating a pull request. You can run tests on it, you can do anything you want. So uh, now, the, just the last thing. Yeah, so for example, these are, these are the releases that are automatically uploaded, you see? This is the artifacts. It's automatically uploaded there by drone. Now the other projects, um, I won't uh, stay too long on that one. It's a, a site actually. Uh, it's a demo site that we built. And what we do here, we, we use the task runner pretty much for anything, really. This is an authentication uh, server, service, that is inside our Docker Compose. We also replace that inside our, inside our Docker Compose. We can generate all the configuration files with, with, with the task runner. You, you, can, you can easily group commands together if you want to have, like, for example, here is like import interface translation. There are these two commands you need to execute one after the other. Well, then just group them together into one command and give it a name, and then all the developers will only have one command to, to work with, right? The same is like uh, export content, for example. This is like, uh, we want to export content, it's like these two commands, we create one command, and then the developers will, uh, will use it. Or if you want to have uh, override configuration, for example, in the task run, that's the way to do it. That will generate 
append the configuration inside the settings. So you override your configuration. This is for keys, for example, for uh, authentication keys that you don't want to ever to commit because we don't commit the build, remember that. And the sync directory and all these kinds of things. We also do, yeah, we generate this service actually, this service.yaml, we generate it as part of our uh, process, replacing the, 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 our, ta our tokens, and then we load that service con mm, YAML file inside Drupal, so we can also override that. So that's a bit more uh, complex um, a use case for, uh, for a site. All right, now uh, let's go back to the presentation. So future developments. Now, um, port the task runner to Robo, now because we, we have contributed the plugin system to Robo, but we did not port our task runner to that, for, of course. In progress, that's actually false. It has been committed like one hour ago, so from uh, our colleagues in Brussels. Then what we want to do also, we figured that actually YAML commands could be an independent project. If you just want to have the YAML commands without using our task runner at all, why not? It's even better, you know? Because then we have to create that, we have to extract this functionality, make it another project, so we increase um, the adoption, possibility of adoption from your site. And that's the ultimately what the Open Europa Initiative is about, is giving back to the community uh, whatever we, we produce. So what we want to do is we will create open Europa slash robo yaml commands, which will just allow your robo installation to have commands in yaml. That's it, simple as that. So you won't need to use our task runner. And our task runner will be just our own task runner for our own use case. That's it. If you want, you can use it also, but you know, you're not forced. Uh, then we have uh, some really nice uh, community contribution already, so we want to release that and then release 1.0. It has been used in the commission since uh, almost a year, so it's kind of stable, we think. So yeah, we don't find much many problems, so I think we are, we are, we are ready. Any questions? Yeah. Microphone, uh, just a second. So, um, how does it work? Because Robo has dependencies, like for example, on Docker, right? Because this is like a on what? Sorry. On Docker, yeah. because that's um, yeah, uh, it's a task, right? You mm -hmm. can have yeah. So, I assume then that Docker needs to be installed. No, first? no, no, no. So no. Uh, there is no dependency. If 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 if, if you have Docker, it, you can run that task. If you don't, you don't. You don't. Have, you cannot. So, not, n when you when you see Docker there. The task runner or Robo will just run Docker, but if it doesn't find the Docker executable, it will just fail, you know? And the same is for us, for our, for our task runner. We do not depend even from Drush. We use the same concept. So we expose, we can generate Drush commands. That's the job of, the job of the task runner is generating shell commands. That's it, right? In an easier way. That's so, so it's like a wrapper yes, uh, it's around so it's the tools that you need, and then you can. Yes, like it's just a wrapper on, sh on the shell, basically. Yeah. So we just generate a Drush command. If you don't have Drush installed, it will fail, of course. Yeah. But it does not require you to have Drush. The same for Docker. It does not require you to have Docker, to have, uh, I don't know, SAS, NPM, nothing. If you have NPM, it will execute NPM. Or if not, then, or Composer, for the right. Composer you need it, of course. Because yeah. So uh, follow-up question, like, then I assume also you can check for versions of, of the tooling. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, we have, uh, it's quite uh, interesting actually. I didn't cover much on Robo, but um, if you dig inside the tasks that they have, they are quite powerful. They have the text processor is quite nice. So you can like replace, check versions, um, do all sort of processing inside your commands. Yeah. My question is, uh, I know Akiak has a tool which is called BOT, which does pretty much the same stuff. Uh, can you compare those? Do you, are you familiar with no. the BOT? Not familiar, but uh, yeah, uh, how is it called again? BOT, Akiak BOT. It's okay. a product of Akiak and it's they pretty much wrap all the ah, okay. commands and you can make configuration, etc. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll have a look at it. Thank you. So first of all, thank you 
for this quick run through. Um, I've got a question to the workflow for the theme. So you then also have inside the theme uh, the configuration for the demo uh, uh, Drupal site, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning if, uh, how much does this, uh, the theme then? No, uh, no, we don't have that. You said the theme, you mean? Yeah, so no. for, the, for, for the development Drupal so setup. Yeah, no, we don't have that. We just, we just installed Drupal and then the configuration is just the one of the theme. So this is actually how the team looks like on 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 uh, um, on GitHub. It's because the, uh, I mean that's that's basically it. That's that's it. That's what is committed on GitHub. So there is no configuration there. Really. It's just the configuration of the theme. Then the site is built, and then all the modules are enabled. So in each module, there is configuration, which is staged, of course. But that's it. Yeah, and so my question would be, the templates then probably rely on some fields being there or some notes? Uh, notes no, the dependencies there? are not on the theme. So the theme, does not the theme does not depend on the module or on that it, it styles. It just styles them. But it, there is no dependency on this, you see? So, um, like here, I think the question is about these two guys here, I think. So the theme is styling the multilingual module, which is the, the, the language switcher that we have, for example. And it's also styling the paragraph thing. Uh, so if you go here, right, uh, that's, that's the multilingual. So this is, the, the, this is provided by the multilingual, but in an, a raw, unstyled fashion. And then the theme is styling it. But there is no dependencies from the, the theme does not depend from the multilingual, except for as a development dependencies. That's why it is, it is um, uh, listed as a development dependencies, you see, and not as an actual dependencies. And if I would have then like a uh, not normal blog post, so I have articles and articles o overview, this would then go into require dev as a separate uh, yes. module, and this module would then just yes. have the configuration for Yes, it. and it will be installed by the, by the task runner. It's the task runner that installs this stuff. Huh? Then I see here, that's, that's, where, that's where the multilingual is installed, and that's the point where the configuration package inside the multilingual module gets staged and imported in the site because the module is installed, see? And the same is for the paragraph, everything. And then you, of, of course, ha have to have then uh, configuration updates and merges and so on inside the Yes, uh, yes, but uh, in this case we don't because it's every time it's like a new build, so, yeah. And then the other nice thing is that with this we can uh, test against different versions of Drupal core at the same time because Drupal core is a development uh, dependency. So on our mm, drone uh, pipeline, we just switch the Drupal core and we say, okay, now test this in Drupal 8.5, now test it on 8.6, 8.7, and all the tests should run uh, as well. So it's very convenient actually to have all the dependencies as actual dependencies, because then you can, you can really test these things nicely, because you can swap the versions, force new versions at test time, and test if something is gonna break for the, when the new version of Drupal core will happen, will be released, you see? So that's, that's why it's also interesting to work this, in this way. Then just one question, so, uh, but when I develop a new model, module or when I develop a new uh, conf uh, configuration entity or uh, configuration itself, isn't this painful to, to do always what? update and... Um, no, because the tests are taking care of, uh, to see if we break something. I mean, we test everything in the theme, so we have like kernel, unit, and the app. Okay. So that's, it's really that. Without test, this is painful, but with test is not so. But you have to have test, of course, to, to do this as well. So. so you said they are ported upstream the plugin system, but do you plan on porting more stuff, like the YAML uh, definition? Yeah, to open source more stuff. Yeah, so we, oh, we to Robo, I mean. No, that one, no, I, I talked with Greg, they, they're not interested in that, okay. being in Robo. So I think I'll just, uh, we just make like contribution to it. I also- Like you depend on that and you have it. Yeah, you just, uh, just, just, yeah, so you require that. So you will require open robo slash robo yaml commands and then you can use those things in robo and without the scanner at all. So we have just robo and that, that's, that's it. Okay, that's so it's cool. very convenient because then you don't need, you are not forced to use our task scanner for, if you just like the yaml thing, which I think is <laughs> it's mostly yeah. the, the looks, selling point. It looks a bit like Ansible. So yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> pretty much the same thing, but it's very easy to do these kind of things, yeah. you know? It's like, uh, it's really small, like the, the, the code footprint is really minimal in, in, in Robo. So it's just really hooking in the right thing and just producing that stuff. It's really nice. So it's just a nice addition to everything. So that company will have to be like, I don't know, the translation of task, you said? Like, uh, because that's an annotation, I guess, or something like that. Yeah, well, if you use a YAML file, then you can make commands inside the YAML. Okay. But, yeah. Oh, Thank you can you. also do it in PHP, of course. Uh, 
Uh, maybe you said this earlier already, but uh, so does it, is the idea that it always creates a Docker container for this thing or no, not? No, no, no. No, totally you not. You don't need it. So, okay. It's my um, setup. Yeah. yeah, but uh, it creates a database? Uh, yes. But uh, it always has the same name for the database? Yes. So if another database already exists no, in your system? No, that's not the case because <laughs> the, the default assumes, so by default, we, 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 we run it in Docker Compose, by default. That's our default. So in the commission, we say, look, this is our default. If you want to have everything set up in two commands, have Docker, then it's done. If you want something else, what you do, you create your runner.yaml in your directory, and you only override these two parameters, not only, you don't need to copy everything, just mm -hmm. these two, and then you can put the name that you want. And this override works, like you have a big YAML file from distribution, and then you have a smaller one, and only those values are being- And then they're merged. So it's yeah. some inheritance. Exactly, then they're merged. Okay, That's okay. It. Yeah. And then if you override this, you can also change your base URL. Yes, exactly, okay. and the database, for example. That's how it we work. So there are, there are some people that use it on their own host, and they do this. They just have this file. Actually, today there is a, one of our colleagues, Paul, um, just released um, open and pull request to have like a, a global runner file at the system level, so that you can also have it in your home and then having just you know this, your setting there. So it's also a nice addition, I think. Okay. But yeah. yeah. Can you use it with Vagrant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is no, I mean, it's completely system independent. I mean, just PHP. If you can run PHP, you can run this thing. There is no infrastructure requirements here at all. It's just PHP. That's it. So you can run in Vagrant, in Docker. That's the Docker machine I have there. In the, your normal host, whatever, really. I mean, it doesn't matter. No, it's not a requirement, really. OK, but you, you can have tasks that, like, uh, uh, create a container or something. Yeah, but then that's tricky because, so uh, it's kind of inception thing, okay? You need PHP to run the task runner, but you cannot assume that your PHP is in your machine. Your PHP is inside the container, so how can you, you see? So in that you have an edge case. If you assume, if you are fine with saying, okay, you, need, you require PHP on your host, then yes, no problem. But that's not a requirement necessarily, you know? We have to assume here that we, we have a Docker Compose and PHP is not on the host of the developer. Anybody can just do this with just with Docker. You don't need, you don't require anything on, on the machine, just Docker. Okay, that's our assumption as, uh, that's our commitment as commission. You just have Docker, if you have Docker, two commands and you have the site in localhost, column 8080 slash build, that's it. Okay, so okay, there you. is another one here, Diogo. Thanks for presentation, first of all, again. Uh, several questions regarding front-end development. Uh, do you use Robert task runner to run yarn comment? No, 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 no. We, never, we don't use these things for node stuff, of course. So it's completely separate yeah, yeah, yeah. from no, Robo. No, we don't do that. No, that we have the node thing to do the node thing. So this theme kind of uh, container yeah, yeah. to run theme. Ah, yeah, so that was, uh, yeah, that's because it's, yeah, it, it is confusing indeed. No, so we have also, um, we have also that thing uh, here uh, somewhere, I don't know where it is, package of JSON here. So we also have uh, our node stuff there. And uh, in the Docker Compose, we do have also an, a node image, of course. So here it is uh, down there, node, you see? So that, so we have the node dependencies, and then those are with node, and then the task runner just does a PHP. You can do, I, I, I put it there for, a sec, for sake of com completion, you know, because it's there, so I need to say it, but I would never use it to do SAS or NPM, of course, because why would we, I mean, be so, you know, yeah, yeah, that's clear. Thing. I mean, so it's, yeah, so we used it both. Mm. Mm. But well, you didn't see it here because I didn't run it because it was no time, so, but usually you have to run also node install, blah, blah, blah. Okay. One, one more related question. Uh, do you expose these front-end libraries uh, via libraries API somehow? Yeah, we are all open source also those. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, there is another, well, yeah, I can, I can show you. So, um, Europa, Europa Component Lab. So this is the, the, the style system of the, the commission, basically. It's, it's open source that too, so if you want to check it out, you can check it. I, I think we have links also on our components. If you go on the theme, there is a link to the ECL, to this thing. You can check it, it's done in, uh, yeah, no, all this fancy thing that we have, we have no idea about. So it's another team, actually, it's from, from another uh, department, so, uh, and then we join together to do that thing. Okay, thank you so much.
All right. No more questions?